Greet you all in a highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three hours, turning our Bibles to Genesis chapter 21, verses 22 to chapter 22, verses 24. Here we see in uh, chapter 21 and verse 22 onwards that Abimelech uh, and P called the commander of his forces, they said to Abraham, God is with you in everything that you do. So uh, they were very, very uh, clear about the presence of God in his life. And therefore, they said, um, now swear to me before God that you will not deal falsely with me or my children or my descendants. Now, here we need to understand that uh, Avimelech was not just talking about Abraham's time, but he was talking about Abraham's descendants also. If, if a Gentile was um, asking Abraham to swear, then obviously it means that he had belief on the words of Abraham. He had belief on the promises of Abraham. From where did he get this kind of understanding? There was something that happened in his life. You know, the Lord witnessed saying he is a prophet. He saw that his prayers were effective. And he also saw that the Lord was protecting him. You know, when he had Shara at his home. So he understood that God was with this man. And therefore, he obviously took it that if God was with this man, then this man will definitely keep his promise. And uh, Abimelech was somebody who worked with a clear conscience. And that's why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they should be filled. So this man uh, was uh, really um, you know, eager to have a proper, a cordial relationship with Abraham, the only man who knew the Lord properly in that area. And he knew that all uh, things that were happening around Abraham were being sovereignly controlled by his God. And that's why uh, even Peter goes on to write in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12 that let your lives uh, be lived so well among pagans that though they speak against you, they may see your good deeds and they may glorify God on the day he visits us. So this was very true about Abraham, that uh, people believed in the covenant that Abraham was making because they knew that God was with him. And then uh, Abraham immediately said, OK, I'll swear it. And then uh, uh, at that point of time, Abraham complained about a well to Abimelech in chapter 25. And Abimelech says, oh, I never heard about it. Now, what is so big about complaining about a well? Because uh, that shows the importance of water in those days. As uh, we've already read about Abraham and Lot, uh, their, their flocks could not be fed in the same part of the land. So there was a scarcity of water. And at that point, we see that Abraham had dug a well. And uh, when he brought it to uh, Abimelech, then uh, Abimelech uh, said, OK, uh, I, I really uh, never heard about it. And then Abraham gives seven ewe lambs or seven female lambs from his flock to Abimelech. And Abimelech says, what's the meaning of this? Then he says, this is a witness between you and me that I have dug this well. That I was here, that I dug this well. It is I who found water here. And then, so the place where both of these swore an oath, that was called Beersheba. And uh, this Beersheba has a very, very important uh, place to play in the geography of Israel in the book of Genesis. And we see that um, the phrase Dan to Beersheba was used almost nine times in the Old Testament. And what it shows was Dan was towards the north and Beersheba was towards the southernmost cultivated land. After Beersheba, you only have the desert of Beersheba. So um, this was the tip of the cultivated land. So this was the border of the land of Judah in the future. So this was very prominent. And so he took uh, that place and uh, he they named it as Beersheba, saying that the uh, king or uh, the king of Gerar and Pekal, and uh, all the people there were, were witnesses that that well was dug by Abraham. 
and uh, then after the uh, treaty had been made then Abimelech and Pekal they lived back to Philistines and Abraham uh, planted a tamarisk tree um, in Beersheba and there we see he called on the name of the Lord the eternal God what a beautiful uh, expression because that was a place where he said this land belongs to me it was one of the first uh, lands in the promised land that where he said this land belongs to me and uh, the people also agreed that this land belonged to Abraham that this well was dug by Abraham and there he called in the name of the Lord the eternal God the reason that word eternal is used is because the, the oath that they swore would not end with Abraham or with Abimelech's death, but it would continue for generations together. And only God was somebody who would stay eternally. And that's why he called on the name of, an, of the eternal God. And then he stayed there for a very long time. Then coming down to 22nd chapter, you see that the Lord tested Abraham. And this time it was a test of love. It was a test wherein uh, Abraham would be brought to a point where it would be very, very difficult for him to obey. And yet, and yet he was demanded to obey. And uh, in verse 2, uh, Genesis chapter 22, it says, Then God said, Take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and uh, go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. So here the Lord is mentioning the person, the place and the pattern of sacrifice. He is not to take whatever he pleases, but God put his hand uh, on the one who was the most prized possession uh, of Abraham. He was his most beloved um, and God put his hand on Isaac and Abraham had to uh, prove his love. And at that point, we see uh, that Abraham really proved his love uh, for uh, the Lord. And he, he obeyed the Lord. And immediately the next day morning, he took a, a wood and his servants and a donkey and he started. And uh, as they were going, he stopped uh, um, his servants and he kept the donkey and put the wood over Isaac and took the fire and the knife and uh, only Isaac and they were walking. And the experience that he calls all of this in verse 5 of Genesis 22, he says, we will worship the Lord and uh, we will come back. Uh, so that word, we will worship, you know, this is called worship in Abraham's language, sacrifice, obedience, and uh, uh, love, the, these are real uh, worship. Um, this is true worship, you know, uh, a worship without sacrifice, a worship without obedience, and a worship without love is, is no worship that the Lord ever attests. And here we see that uh, Abraham was going forward and calling this obedience, this love, and the sacrifice as worship. And then he uses a word, we will come back. So he was talking with faith that um, though they go there, he had in his mind that Isaac would be bound, Isaac would be killed, and Isaac would be burnt. Even after all of this, he said with faith that we will come back. Uh, and as they were walking, then um, Isaac uh, asked him, Father, Abraham said, yes, my son. And he asked him, okay, the fire and uh, the wood are here, uh, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? This was, this was a question that Abraham did not know and could not answer at that point. Whenever he came to a situation where he could not answer or he did not know, he put God in the forefront. What a beautiful answer he gave in verse 8. God will provide for the lamb on the mountain. He did not know, but he had faith that God would provide for him. So this is the kind of faith with which Abraham walked. Hebrews chapter 11 describes the in detail the kind of faith that Abraham had. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 17 to uh, 19, it says in verse 17, by faith Abraham and God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Now God said, through Isaac, your promise will be fulfilled. And now that son is going to be offered. And obviously, uh, people would not be born or uh, children would not be born to ashes or to a dead body. So what Abraham believed logically at that point of time was in uh, verse 19, it says, Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. 
and thereby he offered uh, his uh, uh, son Isaac figuratively as if he received him back from the dead. So Abraham very strongly believed that this God whom I trust, he can even bring back Isaac back. How could he believe this? Because you recognize that his body was as good as dead when Isaac was born and his wife's body was also as good as dead when Isaac was born. And so he definitely recognized that um, if, if out of this dead womb the Lord could bring Isaac and out of the dead body also the Lord could bring Isaac. What a great faith this man had. He never saw anybody rising from the dead. He never saw such kind of things being even heard. Uh, but yet he believed God. He believed God totally. He believed God fully. He believed God so intensely. And that's why, that's why he could offer Isaac. So our real pleasing offering to the Lord is an offering when we believe the character of God, when we believe the uh, magnificence or the, or the, um, you know, capacity of God. Regarding this offering, even James goes on to write in James chapter 2 and verse 20 to 24, we see that James is talking about uh, deeds that are uh, dead. In other words, faith that is dead uh, without deeds. And he takes the example of Abraham and he says, uh, Abraham believed God and it was created to him as righteousness. Uh, uh, in verse 22, James 2 and 22, he says, you see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was complete by what he did. Faith is always complete by deeds. That is, if you don't act according to your faith, then you really don't believe. Because if you really believe something, then you will act in response to your belief. And Abraham believed God. And that's why he put him on the altar. Um, he raised his knife and he was ready to kill him because he had faith that the God who could give uh, Isaac into a dead womb can also raise him back from the dead. Oh, his love was put on the altar because he had faith. Uh, uh, his obedience uh, was because he has faith on the uh, capacity of God. You know, having faith on the capacity of God is not just blindly believing something will happen. No, know who God is, believe his capacity and walk uh, in that belief. You know, walking in faith is nothing but walking in a way that is appropriate to what you believe about God. That's what James right, uh, writes that, you know, he believed God and his actions were also in line with his belief. So walking in faith is uh, walking in a way that is in line with the understanding that you have about the capacity of God. And uh, at that point, uh, the Lord stopped Abraham and he said, now I know uh, that you fear me. And uh, there was a, a ram caught in a ticket and uh, um, he offers that ram. And they come down. And after they, um, at, at that point, the Lord makes uh, uh, a covenant with Abraham. And he says, uh, I will surely bless you. And now he adds something. He says, you will take possession of the cities of your enemies. And uh, through your offspring, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. It was all the nations, a universal blessing. He was the only one through whom all the nations would be blessed. And uh, that is where the Lord, um, you know, exclusively made Abraham a source of blessing to this world. And it was through the Lord Jesus that uh, really all the whole world was blessed. And um, Abraham proved uh, that he loved the Lord uh, more than even his son. And he obeyed the Lord by faith. And he was ready to sacrifice whatever be the cost because he had faith on the person of God. And then he returns and uh, they, he stayed back in Beersheba. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the life of thy saint Abraham. Thank you for the faith that you've given him. Thank you that uh, he could believe the knowledge about you and lay whatever be the consequence upon uh, the faith he had in you, O oh Father. Help us also to live in the light of this kind of faith. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you.